He was born May 23rd, 1971. My name is Logan. I'll be interviewing Adam is a friend. Adam, could you state for the recording what war in branch of service you served in? Sure. Uh, I was in the United States Army, and I, was, I served in actually two campaigns. It was uh, Operation Desert Shield and Operation Desert Storm in the Persian Gulf conflict in 1991. What, what was your rank? I was, uh, at that time, I was a private first class. What? Where did you serve? I served uh, in uh, Germany, Schwabach, West Germany, uh, and the base was called O'Brien Concern. Uh, from there I went to uh, Saudi Arabia, into Kuwait, and then uh, on into Iraq. How many years were you in the service? I was in the service altogether three years uh, active and uh, five years inactive. Where were you living at the time? Uh, originally, I was living in Indiana here, and I joined the service uh, in 1990. Uh, I did my basic training at Fort Sill, Oklahoma, um, and then from there I went to AIT in Fort Bliss, Texas, and then from there over to Germany through, uh, and I spent actually a year and a half in Germany uh, prior to going through the Persian Gulf War, and then finally uh, coming back stateside to Fort Worth, California. What were you doing before you were drafted or enlisted? I was actually working at uh, Gen Corp Automotive in Wabash, uh, and they had a layoff, and I was laid off, and I decided to go ahead and join the service. Did anyone else in your family serve in the military? Yes, my grandfather was a uh, World War II veteran in the United States Army. Uh, my father was a uh, Vietnam veteran, uh, and he served in the Navy. He was over in, uh, he served in the Philippine Islands. I also had uh, two uncles that were in the uh, United States Army. They were also uh, Vietnam veterans. <coughs> Can you tell me about adapting to the military, military life? Uh, adapting to military life from civilian life is a great big change. Um, uh, you can't just get up when you want to. You have to do what they tell you to when they tell you to do it. Um, so if you're used to sleep in until 7 o'clock just to go to school, by 7 o'clock you would have already gotten up, cleaned your room, done your PT training for the day, which entailed push-ups, sit-ups, a lot of stretching, and of course at least three to five mile run. Uh, back to your bunk changed for your day's work and back in formation before 7 a.m. ready for breakfast. How uh, did you choose the branch of service you served in? I actually had an uncle who was serving the National Guard um, and I had went on a uh, weekend trip with him to observe uh, what they do in the National Guard and, and some of their drills that they did and from that point I decided that the Army is what I wanted to do. What kind of training did you have? I had, I went through uh, basic training, uh, which is basic life-saving skills, basic first aid. Uh, they teach you about uh, most of the different weapons, uh, how to take them apart, clean them, put them back together, uh, how to how to sight them in and shoot them, uh, how to maintain them. Um, I had, like I said, uh, first aid, everything from basic first aid. Um, how to read a map, how to find uh, certain points on a map. Um, they teach you about your, the different ranks in the military. They teach you about the Uniform Code of Military Justice, which is uh, United States military law, which is different from civilian law. Um, they teach you leadership, skills, um, teamwork, and self-motivation. What friendships were made? I had quite a few friendships made, um, particularly when we were uh, going through basic training. I had one real good friend. Um, his name was Michael Germain. We got real close. Uh, uh, we did uh, all of our basic training together all the way through our AIT. And then we got split up when we went to Germany. And uh, we, we kept in contact over the years, uh, right up to about probably five years ago. Uh, we lost contact with one another. 
Um, a couple other friends I haven't seen since I got out of the military, but when you're in uh, conflict, you, you do create a good, steady bond with the people that you work with uh, and, and are around every day. As your own duties, what are from the front line? Some of my duties, uh, when we weren't out uh, on patrol or doing things out that way, uh, entailed, uh, I had to pull guard duty uh, for a period of time. Um, other duties would, call, would be called latrine duty, where we had to clean the restrooms. Um, they had uh, KP duty, which means that you're going to go work in the kitchen for the day. Uh, you might have the armory duty, where you go down and you help the armorer. Uh, count weapons or ammo and make sure everything's good to go. Uh, you could also uh, just have a, a regular inspections of your equipment. And then uh, your platoon or your squad may be down doing drills, uh, working with your particular weapon system. What? How did you stay in touch with those back home? Um, I wrote letters. Uh, for instance, uh, stateside was easy. I just called them, wrote letters. Uh, when I was over in Iraq, I think I called, got to call home twice uh, when I was over there. Uh, otherwise, it was just strictly letters. Uh, I got a lot of care packages in the mail and so forth. What do you do for recreation off duty activities? For off duty activities, we would normally play volleyball, go swimming, go hiking. Uh, I actually went through an air assault course where I learned how to repel out of helicopters. And once I got through that, I learned how to tie my harnesses and so forth. I went mountain climbing in California where I would repel down some mountains and off some train trussles and some things like that. Stay pretty busy. Were you still overseas when, you, when the war ended? Yes, I was actually 50 miles outside of uh, Baghdad and a ceasefire was called uh, to end this particular uh, combat situation. How did you return home? We left uh, Iraq, went back into Saudi Arabia and I flew uh, actually commercial jet, TWA, uh, from Saudi Arabia all the way back to uh, Frankfurt, Germany. How hard was it to return to civilization life? It wasn't too bad. It did take me quite a while uh, to get over uh, the hurriness because you're used to a certain way and then when you get out, everything's not that way. You're used to getting up at 4 or 5 a.m. and when you get out, civilian life is not like that. So you have to get yourself turned back around uh, to get on civilian life schedule again. Uh, versus a military life schedule. It is a whole different way of life. Are you a member of any veterans or the system? No, I'm not a member of any uh, veterans organizations at this time. Do you have any contact with fellow veterans? Uh, just through work. I know several veterans there at work that are about my age. I have actually one friend I went to high school with and graduated with. I talked to him from time to time. He is actually a veteran of the same war. How has being in the military affected your life? Being in the military um, affected my life uh, in a positive way, I would like to say. Uh, it taught me leadership skills, self-motivation. Um, it taught me to stand up for some things that I believed in. Um, it taught me a lot of life, life skills, um, <clears throat> to be outgoing, and uh, to, to take the challenges that are set before me and, and master them. Is there anything else you would like to tell us about? Well, if you'd like, I can, uh, I've got some uh, items here I can go over and, and show you and maybe explain a few things uh, about what they are since uh, I've got them out on the table here. Uh, for instance, this is a uh, photo of me and my platoon during basic training. Um, I can't remember everybody's name since it's been so long ago, but I do know this is me down here holding the flag. I was uh, 19 years old then. This is at Fort Sill, Oklahoma. <coughs> This is a plaque that was uh, given to my father 
during the time of the Persian Gulf War by the Wabash Cares Rally, at the Wabash Cares Rally. It says, in appreciation to Private First Class Adam Holbrook for your loyal service to your country and to Wabash County with pride. May God bless you, July 4th, 1991. That was something that I got to watch on videotape. I was still overseas at that time, and my, uh, my parents kept this for me until I came home. This is the hat that I wore when I was over in uh, Operation Desert Storm. I had actually gotten promoted here. Uh, I was a private first class. I became a uh, E4, which is a specialist, while I was over there. This is a uh, Iraq newspaper with a picture of Saddam Hussein on it. Uh, the reason you'll see it this way is because you read right to left, not left to right like we do. It's all written in Arabic. Some Iraq money that I acquired while I was over there, five dinero, 25 dinero, and a one dinero. This is a Iraq soldier's hat. This is what they were using uh, while we were over there. Um, this hat was found, I found this hat uh, while we were out on patrol. And I picked it up and I had everybody in my platoon uh, sign my hat. And I've just kept it over the years as a reminder of where I was at. And so my grandkids will have, you know, say, you know, grandpa was over there and they can show their kids this. This I bought, I actually traded a, uh, two bottles of water for. It, uh, it's an Iraq turban, or, or a Bedouin's turban uh, that they wear to keep the sun off their neck. Some of the awards that I had gotten while I was over there. Uh, the bottom, the bottom medal here is a Liberation of Kuwait medal that was given to us through uh, the King of Saudi Arabia and Kuwait, uh, donated to us uh, for coming over and liberating uh, their country from the invasion of Saddam Hussein and his forces. The top one here is an Army Achievement Medal that I had earned while I was a senior gunner for the Vulcan system. This is the certificate here, but this is also Department of the Army, the Army Accommodation Medal, uh, which is shown here, the Army Accommodation Medal. Uh, I was awarded this uh, for my service and actions in, uh, while serving in Iraq during the war. This is an Army Physical Fitness Test Scorecard, and I've kept it over the years. Um, for example, it shows uh, my name, the date of the test, and my pay grade, my age, which in this case was 20 years old, my height, my unit and push-up score, which was 74 for 92 points, sit-up score 74 for 82 points, and a two-mile run 13 minutes 20 seconds for 86 points for a total of 260 points on this particular test here out of a possible 300. Uh, that was probably the best physical shape I was in in my life. So it is pretty physical demanding. Here's some. Uh, Propaganda here that I brought back. I found these while on a patrol over there. These were laying around in, in one little building that we went through uh, from Iraq. Some propaganda uh, for the war. It's all written in Arabic. Some of the things that I did while I was in service was attend a, a PLDC class, which is primary leadership development class. You have to attend this class to be a non-commissioned officer, which means to make your sergeant uh, promotion. This is my TLDC class there, I'm, I'm sitting here, it's uh, 30 days long. Uh, it's pretty rigorous training.
This is a diploma where I graduated AIT at Fort Bliss, Texas in El Paso uh, for my job that I did in the Army, uh, which was a Vulcan senior gunner. This is my diploma where I graduated uh, Fort Sill, Oklahoma for basic training. And I have some more here of uh, certificates of achievements. Uh, for some different things that we did there out on uh, patrols and uh, this was this particular one happens to be in uh, Desert Storm as well. I had earned another certificate of achievement. This is an official certificate of promotion from the United States Army. And a couple more certificates of achievement that I had earned. In addition to the interview, I would like to have Adam show his uniform. Well, Logan, on the uniform we have, first off, on the collar of the shirt, the dress shirt that we wear, I have my rank here. The rank is always worn here, which is Specialist E4 at this time. And on the collar of the uniform on the right hand side we have US symbol for the United States. On the left hand side I have a uh, emblem here showing what I did. That was air defense artillery. So this is the air defense artillery emblem on the left side. On the lapels up here we have my unit crest which is, which is this time. Uh, this patch here was 7th Infantry Light Division out of Fort Worth, California. This is their unit crest here, and this is their patch. On, on down the sleeve, we have my rank again, and another patch with an eagle in the middle of, of the uh, teardrop, upside down teardrop. Coming down the left side of my uniform here, I have a set of air assault wings. You see the wings attached to a helicopter with the helicopter blade. That is where I went through air assault school. And I have a row of ribbons, which are the awards that I have gotten uh, during the three year time I was in the military. We also display them here, which is some of the awards that I showed you uh, in pre previous to the interview. On down on the pocket, we have uh, my rifleman's badge where um, I qualified with my M16 out on the range. On the uh, right hand side again, on the top we have a unit crest, down below above my main, a unit crest, and then on the hat also a unit crest. On the right hand side it says Old Ironsides 1st Armored Division Patch. Uh, this is on my right side, any veteran who has fought in a war uh, will wear his uh, unit patch on his right side that's called a combat patch um, to show what unit he was in that conflict with. And below that, again, we have another rank here. Um, also, we've seen them before. The belt, it's kind of old, so it's not real shiny, but when I used to wear this, uh, it was just as shiny as some of these up here. And I appreciate uh, the opportunity to uh, uh, interview by you, Logan, and um, thank you. Thank you.